Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who picked Fabricio Verdum to defeat Stipe Miocic. And I'm here to talk about Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko. I am the guy who picked Shevchenko to beat Grasso, by the way. But this is the rematch. This is the rematch. Shevchenko, the defending champion, who uh, or was the defending champion, finally got beaten by Alexa Grasso, the first girl to beat her at flyweight and take her strap. And now she gets an immediate rematch because she'd never been beaten aside from bantamweight fights against Amanda Nunes. And... Uh, Cut stoppage to Liz Carmouche. Uh, Shevchenko is 23 and 4, 35 years old, and she's got the same height, but giving up, I think, half an inch of reach to 30 year old Grasso, who is 16 and 3. Shevchenko has four losses, one by TKO, that's a doctor stoppage to Liz Carmouche. May as well have never happened, and I have it that. Uh, by, I think, Shevchenko's word that Shevchenko was winning that fight. Nevertheless, she won the rematch years later. Her one submission loss comes to Alexa Grasso. That's the only real relevant fight here. It had happened a few months ago. And her two decision losses both come to Amanda Nunes. Grasso, 16-3. and three. Her three losses come by sub- one by submission to Tatiana Suarez and two decisions to Felice Herrig way back and Carla Esparza. Look, Alexa Grasso is no longer a bad fighter on the ground. She was underrated a year and a half ago. Now, after submitting Shevchenko in round four, Alexa, shut up. I got to start calling her Grasso. So Grasso, uh, Grasso submitted Shevchenko in round four. And now you can't deny that Grasso is... A uh, really good submission artist, so she's not bad on the ground. She didn't look great in her loss to Tatiana Suarez, but A, she's gotten a lot better, I'm sure, as Tatiana has been out for a while, and Tatiana herself is a fucking monster, so there's no shame in losing like that anyway. But Grasso, with her performance against Carla Esparza, only, almost submitting her and going down to the wire with her right before she won the title, Carla, uh, that was... The first inclination that she was making serious strides on the ground. Then she submitted Joanne Calderwood. Now Joanne Wood got her first submission victory and looked incredible doing so. And now she has a win over Valentina Shevchenko. The first girl to legitimately finish her. And she did so in the championship rounds with an opportunistic submission. It was a face crank, but... Yeah, she took her back and cinched that thing up tightly. So, Alexa Grasso is a well-rounded fighter, and she's good on the ground. But, first and foremost, she is a boxer. And I do think boxing was the story of that stand-up bout uh, the last time. I thought Valentina was forced to go to the ground because her Muay Thai was not holding up to the pressure in boxing of Sean Strickland. I mean, uh, Alexa Grasso. But you get my point. Boxing is good enough. Boxing and pressure, if you have the, the advantage with the hands and you make it a battle of the hands by crowding the kicks, then boxing can be the story of the stand-up bout, you know, even though it's looked at as like uh, the most limited form of fighting. It's, uh, it was effective, and Alexa Grasso had Shevchenko on her heels, and she was leading the dance with her boxing, and I do think that's going to be the story here. I think maybe Valentina's going to have some plan, working, you know, some kicks and some better, you know, movement circling out. But I still think Alexa Grasso, uh, her hands are just going to be leading the dance on the feet. And I think uh, Shevchenko, despite being a a more versatile striker and pretty damn dangerous, I'd say more dangerous for sure, she has to uh, get by those hands of Alexa Grasso. Whether it's by chopping up her legs or just in general moving better and uh, taking away the... uh, the longer punches, the straight punches of Alexa Grasso. Grasso, as I mentioned in my last pre-fight video, she never throws wild hooks ever. Seen her throw like maybe, I don't know, 10 hooks in her whole career. It's nothing but straight punches. And that's really fucking effective at winning a jousting battle. So I think she's going to have an advantage there. But I do think Shevchenko is going to have the advantage she had in the last fight. Ripping her to the mat. That's always been one of Valentina's strengths. We've seen her go through some great fighters on the ground. Even some bigger girls like a Caitlin Chukagin pounding her out from uh, the Crucifix as well as Jessica Andrade. But 
in general, Valentina on the ground, uh, that's where she can be the bully and her physicality, because I do think she's got strength and physicality on her side. That's where it can show itself, you know, uh, on the inside and especially on top. And I think Valentina felt that in her last fight, and she's going to be going out of her way to make that happen here in this fight. Uh, doesn't mean she's going to win, but I st still think much like Grasso's advantage with her hands, it's going to be an advantage she carries into the rematch. Grasso, despite getting better and better on the ground, I think she's she's in trouble if she finds herself underneath Valentina. And she just, in the press conference or whatever the fuck, they were doing some Q&A with both of them sitting in front of each other, and that was earlier today. Uh, it looked like she was trying to bait Shevchenko into a uh, a striking bout by saying, hey, you're the Muay Thai girl. I expected you to strike, but I guess wrestling is how you do things. It wasn't quite that sassy, but uh, that's pretty much the gist of what she said. And I think um, she felt, you know, she's a little worried about having a strong girl like Valentina stuffing her on the ground and neutralizing her. And I think, you know, I've seen the fight twice this week, their first fight, and I saw it, you know, live the first time. I think it's a... Uh, it's going to be a similar fight, but I'm going with Shevchenko here. I'm going with Shevchenko. I didn't like the way she looked on the feet. I did think she was technically up two rounds. Yeah, two to one. But I thought, this is not the fight I expected, and I can tell it's not the fight she expected. But now she knows what to expect, and I'm expecting her, a lot of expectations here, I'm expecting her to uh, make her game plan built around that advantage she exploited and felt in the first fight. Both girls have advantages, and they both know each other very well. But I think Shevchenko, being this uh, tactician and champion at the highest level, and still, I think, in her prime, she's going to be fighting very wisely, and I expect her to win this fight. Shevchenko is the pick and the bet, minus 175. I also like her decision line at plus 175, but I'm not too committed to it. And, uh, yeah, that is the play. I think she wins this fight. I think it will be her neutralizing a girl who's got her a little outgunned on the feet, in my opinion. But uh, Shevchenko. Shevchenko by decision is the pick. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit, and check out my other videos.